I'm Sith King. And I'm Sonic Sons. We're doing a progressive review today. See, I wanted to watch this new series. Well, it's not new, actually, and it's from France, like one of my favorite series, Code Lyoko. It's called Miraculous Ladybug. We didn't make it five minutes in before we said, you know what, we don't like this. <laughs> I mean, I might go back and try it again now that I've gotten past the initial stage of starting, but... I don't know. I feel like I'd be embarrassed watching with you. No, well, no the, the, the dub, you know, you can tell it's been dubs with the mouth movements. And Libby showed up. That's where we actually stopped. We're like, oh, look, it's the, it's Libby. the Libby. It's uh, the popular girl who hates everybody. And we've seen this in every show. So we just, no. <laughs> yeah, it's whatever. <clears throat> so instead, we decided to check out Netflix. And we saw a picture of a preview of an episode for something called Dragon Pilot on Netflix. And I'm rambling, but that's only because my brain is full of fuck right now, because the preview <laughs> picture showed a dragon with rocket engines strapped to it, and we said, yes. We didn't even look at anything else, we just said, yes. Let's go look at this. We are 8 minutes and 57 seconds, and I think I've used the words, <laughs> what the fuck, more times than I think is strictly healthy. This, this show is so weird. It is so fucking weird. So this girl in school... Which is apparently maybe a military school? Maybe? Maybe? They don't explain anything. Nothing is explained. They're, she's she's out of the classroom and there's like a phone for like, what do you want to be when you grow up, I guess? And she just happens to see a jet passing overhead. She's like, I don't know, I'll be in the Air Force. Well, uh, the Japanese the Aerial Self-Defense Defense Forces. Force. Yeah, because yeah. the Japanese Constitution says that they're basically allowed forces to defend themselves, but not to actually go to war because... Well, the U.S. kind of helped them write the Constitution, and we didn't want to have to do the island hopping campaign again. Yeah, that was quite a campaign. After we beat their asses. Let's let's just say that, because... Okay, I, I know that, that seems like it's a little petty, but just this bothers me. That there are so many factions in history that just keep coming back again and again, even though they were soundly defeated the first time, and were a bad idea. Okay, essentially, this is basically Nazis, the Confederacy, and Imperial Japan. But people keep wanting these things to come back. Uh, this has nothing to do with the episode. Those are terrible things, I agree. But, but just, just, why do people, okay, you know what, no, no. <laughs> Enough craziness already. No, no, we're, that's not, that's, that's real crazy. No, I know, that's what I'm saying. We need, this is just so much weirder. <laughs> yes. Okay, so... The girl is apparently in class and she gets handed some papers which are like a transfer form that says go to hangar 8 on the north side. And like is this immediately after she filled out her earlier form? Because they're in a different outfit. Is this but like two years later? But there's no subtitles or anything to say okay this is a time skip. But she's in a different outfit. There was one mention of her taking a, a test of some kind but she clearly wasn't expecting to actually go to the I'm just going to call it the Air Force. Um, um, anyway, so they sent her down to Hangar 8 over No, 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 no. here's Force what's weird. Base. They say, oh, Hangar 8? I don't know where that is. It's okay, take my moped. <laughs> is there a history between you? Do you know she's going to return the moped? I wouldn't lend... If I had a moped, I wouldn't lend any of my classmates that. Maybe you're just hoping the moped will get eaten. <laughs> this, this girl clearly knows purposes. what's going on, but... I don't know if she, for, I don't know if anyone in this thing really knows anything. I don't know anything and I'm watching the damn thing! So our hero girl, what's her name? We don't even know the name of the main character. It's either Hisone or Masota, considering the subtitle. I'm guessing one of those is the dragon, one of those is the girl. Um, yeah, Probably. so she goes into this hangar. Well, she gets lost first. Okay, lost. And this little lady's like, oh, you want to go over there to the, the woods. And, like, Hands thanks, her a yogurt lady. and then goes away. Thanks for the contribution to the plot, old lady. Then she finds this hangar, like, nestled in the woods, basically. And I was thinking, it's a bad place to have a hangar when there's lots of birds around. Yeah, the bird strikes are a thing. Although then, maybe this is just their food, the dragon's food yeah, source. Yeah, because then... But, okay, but seriously, nesting birds right next to an Air Force base? Like, okay, even if there is a dragon, that still sounds like a bad idea. Sounds bad. Okay. So so apparently Hangar 8 has no personnel and no lock on the door because she just walks in. And, and the whole place looks decrepit and old. And let me tell you something. 
I have allergies to mold. They're not severe, but like I can feel the tightness in my chest every once in a while when it's been wet. I am looking at this place and I'm already getting tightness in my chest. Just, Jesus Christ, this place looks like it hasn't been there in a thousand, no one's been here in 50 years. Like, they could have been scrambling zeros out of this place in the to defend Nagasaki or something the last time it was openly used. And this whole place looks like crap, but she gets really scared and she's walking around and with her phone no light lights. on. She's like, what's going on here? So she does the logical thing. I'm feeling scared. I know what will help. I will sit in the middle of the hangar floor outside of this mysterious pool and watch cat videos. I swear to shit she starts doing this. <laughs> and then a dragon rises out of the water and eats her. <laughs> eats her. Smash cut to main title. <coughs> and then she wakes up in the hospital. <laughs> and there's someone who's explaining that apparently dragons have always existed, but Japan... The Japanese military has always keep kept it a secret, keep carrying it over from the shogunate. And for some reason, like, the shogun is like, oh, yeah. No, he describes it as, dragons were, like, super useful to have, but they also became targets to attack, so he started, like, disguising them. They've got, like, the dragon in, like, blankets or a giant kimono or something, and then, like, a dragon hiding behind a banner, but not even behind it. He's just poking his head through the banner, and it's, like, the worst disguise ever. And then the guy, and then the guy explaining all this to poor hero girl is just like, do you think she heard my explanation? Have you never heard of shock? Girl is just she like, was eaten. Eaten and then vomited up, and we see this brief flashback of, like, they're injecting the dragon... With Ipecac with... or something, so it would vomit her up. <laughs> Which is just so against the idiom of dragons. You know what I'm saying? Like, you do not mix these two ideas together. That's like Indiana Jones hiding in a fridge. Like, it didn't... It doesn't, you don't mix these two ideas together, but, like, now we're doing it. Um, and, and then they say... You've been selected to pilot a dragon. <laughs> because why? Because you Fuck got you. eaten and vomited up. But, like, you seem okay with it, even though she's clearly not. She is clearly not. Dude, I mean, if she's referring to how okay she'd be, I would be screaming at this point. <laughs> or just in horrified silence as my mind shatters. But they're like, okay, so we're getting you into... Oh, God. They put her in camouflage... But they don't have the pattern move at all. It's like this weird staticky camouflage that actually makes her stand out more. So good job with that. <laughs> um, and, and they say, okay, so we're going to get you to touch the dragon. Why would she go along with this? Is this a Japanese thing where you're supposed to obey authority? Because at this point, we'd like you to touch the dragon. <laughs> well, it's been nice. <laughs> Fuck you guys. I'm out of here. They, 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 they tried to eat her. No, no, I'm sorry. It, it did eat her. Yeah. yeah, but I'm talking like it just growled. Like, like actual use the esophagus and everything, as far as we know. Yes. Um, the dragon is all really cartoony, by the way. Yeah, reason. like. And and as they're walking her in back to Hangar Eight, they're explaining that dragons generate a lot of heat lying around. So they need to go fly to get rid of the excess heat. That's not how thermodynamics works, it's not as how far heat as I know. Works. Not uh, really. And, and furthermore, now there's dozens or hundreds of people in the hangar. There's dozens of people in the hangar. It looks way cleaner because you can just do that in like half an hour. And they're, they've got the dragon underwater and they're like chilling the water to stop it from overheating, but like. Oh, we're at our limit, because I guess they ran out of refrigerants or something. Which is bullshit, because ice exists. Yeah, ice exists. Have you heard of that? Um, ice! Uh, <laughs> it exists. Oh, god damn it. <laughs> okay, so then... Look, if it's a power requirement thing, maybe you could, I don't know, move this dragon to somewhere where there's a nuclear plant or something. Or just put it somewhere cold, or just the thermodynamics didn't make much sense in the first place. Um... So then they're like, okay, you're our savior. You can fly the dragon from around what? to stop him from overheating, apparently. Why? Why do you need a dragon? Why don't you just release these things in Antarctica and let them hunt seals or something? <laughs> That'd be kind of cool. Uh, well, but also, do they sense. not have a single guy in the or girl in the entire Air Force who 
can pilot the dang thing? Actually, they did mention that it's been three years since someone bond- was able to bond with the dragon. So they did explain that in a minimalistic way. Okay. So now she 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 walks up to the thing and then it, it, it bends its head down to like let her touch. I was afraid they were going to mimic the scene of Hiccup bonding with Toothless in the Forbidden Friendship scene where he raised his hand and touched Toothless on the nose. Thank God they didn't do that because God, this has not earned it yet. I mean, don't get me wrong. This is this is the funniest thing that I've seen in months. Literally, the first episode is called It Is Insane. Yeah. But you do not earn the Forbidden Friendship scene. No, yeah, well, guess what? They didn't go with that. The thing eats her again! <laughs> and they're currently screaming about they need more Ipecac. Um, and how this is great because the dragon made the first move. <laughs> yes! Animals will move towards food! <laughs> what is wrong with this show? Oh my god, we have been ranting about how silly this whole premise is for longer than we have watched it. Oh, oh dear god. Discord is watching the show and he's saying... Yeah, this makes no goddamn sense. <laughs> Discord is ca- the chaos gods are sitting behind him and going, "No, bro, we agree with you. This we are chaos incarnate, and this makes no sense." All right, so I guess we're gonna watch more of it. We oh just like- God! <laughs> Ten minutes, twenty-five seconds. <laughs> just- so we just met what would happen if you f- mated Frog Girl with Bakugo for a My Hero Academia, <laughs> who openly says that she's gonna bully heroin girl or whatever and um they're practicing maneuvers which apparently means she's going to get devoured alive by the dragon it's and like they like, just said that the main way of getting out of the dragon involves the dragon throwing you up but they've just said that in case of an emergency you exit the back what this is a show where they just said that the emergency <laughs> procedure is to get shit out by a dragon. What? <laughs> I don't know what's going on anymore. <laughs> I feel like you haven't said anything like in the <laughs> minute I've been talking. You've just been laughing. I think it's possible someone... Some author is going out of their way to make dragons less cool. <laughs> like, they just hate that dragons show up in every other media. <laughs> what is this show? The worst dragon experience possible. Who organized this? <laughs> Someone looked at this and said, yes, this is what we want. Pooping <laughs> dragons. <laughs> and puke. <laughs> This is what we're going to market to children. <laughs> there were there were layers of bureaucracy this had to go through. Yeah. There were censors. There was media executives. There were advertising executives. There, there were people who ad- sold this to Netflix. Yeah, if I, what did the artists feel drawing this? You go home every day and you're like, so what are you working on at work? Oh, we got this is why about- seppuku exists. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm hoping they had fun doing something really silly. What <laughs> is this? <laughs> what the fuck is this? Uh, still 14 minutes, 43 seconds oh, left to go in this episode. Fuck. Oh, holy shit. <laughs> Sith King is so fucked. No. I'm done. I, I, I insisted we stop. Uh, I, I'm done. I am not watching any more of this. This is just so fucking stupid. We didn't even make it through the first fucking episode. <laughs> nope. Uh, she started making sense. She said there was a great moment there. Where they're all like, hey, you gotta go get yourself eaten by the dragon on purpose. Because apparently that is the standard operating procedure for piloting the thing, somehow. Uh, and, um, and she said, and the people said, you know what to do from watching the training videos. And more importantly, you had every opportunity to back out. At which point she says, I did say I want to back out. Fifteen times! And then she calls every one of them out on their bullshit. Including the Sundari child thing. 
uh, on Bakugo her bullshit. Person, yeah. yeah, she even brings up the law. She threatens to take this to the media. She says this is entirely being harassment and so forth. Uh, she brings up military code of conduct, <laughs> yeah. and then she leaves. Yeah, we're like, but then so we're cool. like, oh my god, she is the most relatable character right now. We were happy, but she kept the helmet. And then she went back to the dragon and tried to talk to it while wearing the helmet. And uh, for some reason, the dragon broke out with her in its stomach. And at the point where I, I said stop, we're done. She was inside the dragon's stomach being digested. Yeah. While it's flying away. While it's flying. No. I'm done. This this is just... That was offensively... It started a cool premise. Yeah, I like dragons. And fighter jets. I like dragons. I like technology. I like Magitech. That is a cool premise. But when you take every step to not only show how stupid your premise is... To show how stupid every one of your characters is, and then deliberately go forward every way while staring at the audience and saying, This is how stupid we're being. And give us this hope spot where she was all rational for 10 seconds and then went back to the. Oh, Idiot. Man. No. No. I am not going to watch a girl sitting inside of a dragon's stomach and have that be the basis of an anime. I, I refuse. I refuse to participate. I refuse to watch. I'm done. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm not I'm not encouraging you to keep watching it, believe me. Uh, so there's our review. If ever of you um stumble upon this show, you've been Skip. warned. <laughs> you have to Don't warn. watch it. This is just God damn it. <laughs> Alright. I'm yeah. offended. The perils of random browsing. I suppose. No, just... I'm Sith King. We're done. That was awesome.